It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Thursday, Friday, the day after Thursday, the day after Thanksgiving. What is it? November 23rd, 2012, the day after Turkey Day. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, sitting in for Alex. And thank you for joining us for the next three hours. We are going to be covering all the breaking news that's happening today. And there's quite a bit of it. We've also got two guests coming up. Uh, one, Mike Bundrant, an expert in uh, psychology, going to chat with us about the madness of crowds. And we've, you know, we've seen some fights and some outbreaks of violence in the Black Friday shopping sprees, which is a symptom of the devolving culture in America. Alex Jones will also have a video that I think he's filming right now or, or just in the last few minutes. We're going to play that video about Black Friday shopping sprees during uh, this this broadcast here sometime in the next three hours we'll bring you the update on exactly when that's happening soon we've also got joining us ed group to talk about the dangers of holiday foods and uh, what's really in the foods not just you know the normal bad stuff fried foods and so on but aluminum in foods and the gmos and the aspartame and, and what you can do to detox your body from those foods so we've got a couple of experts coming up today also i personally have committed to never coming on the alex show unless i bring a piece of comedy with me so today i've got a poem for you called tsa santa and the night before christmas and uh, tsa santa Unlike regular Santa, TSA Santa sneaks down your chimney and steals all your electronics and then auctions them on eBay. So I'll have that poem uh, coming up for you, uh, along with some illustrations, too, for those of you watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. Now, in addition to that, we've got news on the economic IQ test. You know, this big discussion coming up now about the fiscal cliff. We're going to fall off the fiscal cliff unless we go deeper into debt. That's the message that we're all being told by both Republicans and Democrats. And Timothy Geithner says, hey, let's get rid of the debt ceiling altogether and have infinite debt. Yeah, that's Geithner's approach. So we're going to talk about that. We've got news about a human rights group warning about the coming robotic war crimes against humans, the Terminator could become a reality if we don't change the direction we're going. We've also got, um, what is this, news from Infowars.com, a Paul Joseph Watson article about armed drones to patrol the highways by 2025. Yeah, imagine that. Instead of a cop pulling you over, a drone pulls you over. In fact, the drones are going to be equipped with weapons that can blast your vehicle with an electromagnetic pulse to disable all your vehicle electronics. Won't that be wonderful? Another way to enforce the police state. Now, we've also got, think about this. Here in Texas, we had a big pileup on the highway uh, yesterday. Uh, 100 vehicles involved in this massive crash involving fog. Now, that, as sad as it was, there, there were some fatalities and a lot of injuries. It's also a metaphor for the economic crash that's coming and the fog, the economic fog into which we are driving right now as a nation. So, in the next segment, I'm going to explain that and why we need to put on the brakes on debt spending. Otherwise, we're going to have a national pileup, an economic train wreck involving not just 100 cars, but 300 plus million people. That's what's coming. So watch for that uh, or listen for that here in the next segment. Also, we're going to have some comments today about the secession of the state of Texas. That's been a hot topic in the last week. Alex has covered it here on the show with other guests, including Joseph Farah from uh, World Net Daily. We're gonna talk about secession. We're gonna talk about the TSA and what they're doing today, right now during the travel season, how they are continuing to abuse 
our women and children, family members, and Fourth Amendment rights. All of that coming up and much more straight ahead. So this is the Alex Jones Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break with all that breaking news, guests, and much more. Stay with us. All right, welcome back, folks, to the Alex Jones Show. This is Mike Adams, the health ranger, filling in for Alex. And thank you for joining us. Today is Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, November 23rd. <laughs> I have to actually check the clock for that to make sure I'm getting it right. Things are pretty relaxed on a holiday schedule. And, you know, we've got an incredible show lined up here for you today, so stay tuned. We've got a couple of guests coming up, including Ed Group and Mike Bundrant, uh, talking about the madness of crowds and the, um, you know, these Black Friday shopping stampedes where people always get killed, it seems, almost every year. And there have been some r reports of some, you know, craziness happening last night and early this morning. You know, just driving around last night, I saw people camping out at Best Buy at like 6 p.m. yesterday, starting to camp out there. And I'm thinking, you know, what does this culture come to when that is the most important thing for people to camp out in, in front of a Best Buy to, to save what? I don't know, a couple hundred bucks off of a, a flat panel display. Why aren't these people camping out in front of the White House and demanding liberty for the American people? You know, they're, they're, they're willing to go camp out to save a little bit of money off some electronics, but not to, you know, defend um, <laughs> liberty in America and the Constitution. Or, or why aren't we camping out in front of all the airports and blockading the TSA for their violations of the Fourth Amendment and basic human dignity? So it just goes to show you where the priorities are right now in America. But we'll talk about that in more detail. Also coming up today, we've got uh, TSA Santa, a night before Christmas poem that I put together for you. We'll share that with you here in a minute. Plus a lot of other news on the economy, on drones. Uh, Alex Jones has a special video that he's shooting right now that we're going to play um, probably in the next hour, sort of depending on when that, when that comes in and gets ready. A lot of breaking news on the economy. Some comments for you on Texas secession and much more. So, so here we go. Thanks for joining uh, me today here on the Alex Jones Show on this Friday after Thanksgiving. And I hope you had a great Thanksgiving, by the way. And I, I do want to say, you know, just for all of us, I want to say how thankful I am. And I know I speak for the InfoWars crew that's here today to say, and, and certainly for many of you listening, to say how thankful we are to have our free will and to, to live in a, a universe created by an intelligent creator that gave us, who gave us free will, who gave us the ability to make our decisions so that we can discover what kind of character we have, what kind of person we are. You know, imagine if we lived in a world where we didn't have free will and everything was predetermined and it was just like sort of watching a movie from a first person point of view where, you know, everything was, was fate. Uh, that wouldn't be interesting. That wouldn't be fun. It would be like being a prisoner in, in effect in your own body. But we don't live in that universe. We live in a universe where we have free will, we can make decisions, and as a result, we are responsible for the, the ramifications of those decisions. And that's a good thing. Even though we have to fight a lot of evil and, and we coexist on this planet with a lot of evil, at least we have been given the power to make our decisions. So I'm thankful for that above everything else. And then in addition, of course, at a more mundane level, I'm thankful for you, the listeners, and for InfoWars and the entire InfoWars team, for Alex Jones and his work and everything else that goes on here that helps bring awareness and liberty to everyone listening. So just want to say thank you to all of you. And let's, let's move right into some of, the, um, some of the more fun bits here. Now, I, normally I would just start off with, with the news, and I'll get to those headlines in just a second, but I got to share this with you. The TSA has become such a cancer on American culture. It is, it is ruining uh, dignity. It is saying that uh, uh, pedophilia is okay. It's saying that molesting your, your, your grandmother is acceptable. You know, these kinds of things. This is what the TSA, this is the message that the TSA is sending that you don't even need to take an oath of office to reach down someone's pants these days. Now, all you got to do is take a couple weeks of training as a TSA officer, and boom, you know, there, there you are. Suddenly, you have federal authority to molest travelers. And there's something 
very deeply wrong with that. I know you agree with me on that point, but the TSA, we've got to make fun of the TSA. And I did that a few months ago with that video called TSA Help Wanted, which uh, YouTube immediately blocked and censored because it was about to go viral. But I've decided to make fun of the TSA yet again with another bit of comedy because this is, this is, where, this is what they hate the most. To make fun of them is the opposite of bowing down and licking their boots, bowing down to tyranny. To make fun of them is to belittle them in, in their actions and in their lack of integrity. And that's what we're going to do right here. So we've got illustrations for those of you watching on prisonplanet.tv. And here's the poem that I put together a couple days ago called TSA Santa and the Night Before Christmas. You ready, guys? There we go. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse, when along came a thud and a sick-sounding oof, like some huge man-shaped blob just got dropped on the roof. He scrambled and cursed as he fumbled his way to the chimney, I know, because I heard a voice say, "'This better be good. One more house and I'm done.' Then he scaled down the chimney with a pepper spray gun. I fled as the monster squeezed out of the chute. It was TSA Santa come to steal all our loot. With a sack in one hand, like he does with young boys, he stole all our iPads and cameras and toys. He stripped us of everything and slithered away to prep all the items for sale on eBay. TSA Santa loves holiday cheer. He can steal much more stuff at this time of the year. He crushes your testicles and little boy's dreams, making good on big government's tyranny schemes. If TSA Santa tries to steal all your loot, aim your 12-gauge with care and don't blink when you shoot. For the world would be better without tyranny and fear. We could all enjoy Christmas and a happy new year. There you go, folks. TSA, Santa, and the night before Christmas. A bit of uh, a bit of comedy satire relief for you there. Hope you enjoyed that. All right, now we've got coming up next, uh, we're going to go to an interesting video about carbon taxes, Al Gore, and Captain Planet. This is a piece by Melissa Melton. I'm going to show that video for you here. And it's timely because, of course, Al Gore is once again saying the uh, planet's in a huge crisis, and if we don't give him carbon tax money... And we're all going to die under a tidal wave of, of rising, rising ocean water elevation. And he doesn't mention GMO or anything like that. This is all about carbon only. Don't mention GMOs. Just tax the carbon. That video is beginning right now. So enjoy that video. We'll be back after the break with much more here on The Alex Jones Show. Take a look. I'm Melissa Melton reporting for InfoWars Nightly News. Well, the U.S. carbon tax is back on the table, and if Al Gore has his way, it's coming soon to a bank account near you. Following on the heels of Hurricane Sandy and the re-election of President Barack Obama, the Congressional Budget Office this week released a report all about how low-income families can now afford a carbon tax. Conservative and liberal think tanks alike have jumped on the bandwagon, hosting all-day panels on the topic and putting out white papers. And right on time, here comes Al Gore openly calling on President Obama to institute a carbon tax to save us all from the fiscal cliff budget crisis. In addition, Gore also premiered another 24 hours of reality, a dirty weather report. Across the globe, cataclysmic weather events are occurring with such regularity that it's being called a new normal. But there's nothing normal about it. And there's something else that lies destroyed amid the rubble, the truth about climate change where he urges people to go to his Climate Reality Project website to sign up to, quote, change the world by becoming an Al Gore climate leader, educating people on Gore's brand of environmentalism. The website actually says, climate change is not your fault for the car you drive, the lights you turn on, or the food you eat. The climate crisis is our problem. So apparently we can all fix our problem together. All we have to do is pay Al Gore carbon taxes. Now, if climate change could be attributed to the lights you turn on, as Gore puts it, perhaps he would be at the top of the list, considering in just one year his mansion used a quarter of a million kilowatt hours, amounting in $30,000 in utility bills. Utility bills Gore will easily be able to pay if carbon taxes go through, as he stands to make billions. As InfoWars has extensively reported, Man-made global warming is a hoax. It's based on shady science that's propagated to institute a one-world government through money-making schemes like cap-and-trade and carbon taxes. 
Maybe Al Gore thinks if he repeats this scare mantra over and over again, we'll finally believe it and pay him some carbon taxes. Now, on a side note, do you remember the 1990s environmental cartoon Captain Planet? In it, five youths from all across the globe called Planeteers would get together to fight pollution and capitalism, and when their powers combined, it would summon Earth's greatest champion, Captain Planet, a magical blue guy with a green mullet who would come in to save the day and tell kids the power is yours when it came to saving the Earth. Your powers combined. I am Captain Planet. You have to wonder, was Captain Planet some kind of globalist propaganda programming on a massive scale? As the elementary and middle school students who used to come home from school and watch Captain Planet on TV every day are now the adults who turn on the TV every day that tells them that man-made global warming is killing the earth and so is overpopulation and only they can do something to fix it. And what's more, does Al Gore somehow think he's the real-life Captain Planet? I mean, after all, he's swooping in to save the Earth with his carbon taxes, and the UN even named him Champion of the Earth in 2007, much like Captain Planet is called Earth's greatest champion. In addition, Gore's website tells us that by uniting our voices, we have the power to change the world, just like Captain Planet says, with your powers combined, before he saves the planet. And after all, yesterday's Captain Planet Planeteer wannabes now have the opportunity to become today's Al Gore climate leaders. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the power is yours to save the Earth. And according to Al Gore, all you have to do is pay him some carbon taxes. I'm Melissa Melton for InfoWars Nightly News. All right, welcome back, folks, to the Alex Jones Show here at the InfoWars studio in Austin, Texas. This is Mike Adams, the health ranger, the editor of naturalnews.com, filling in for Alex today, who I think is listening in, uh, probably enjoying uh, taking a little, a little time off with his family. I'm really happy that he's able to do that. And so here's some of the headlines right now. Tax increases could factor in MLB uh, negotiations. Tax increases are coming. Watch out for the term revenue when it comes to the fiscal cliff negotiations. We'll talk about that term and the misuse of that word here in a second. Sandy ravaged New Jersey families face almost $7,000 in tax hikes in the fiscal cliff stalemate. Uh, that's interesting because, of course, New Jersey supported Obama for president. So I think the Drudge headline says, own it. <laughs> yeah, own it. You, uh, you elected this guy president, and now you're going to pay. You're going to pay right out of your bank account. Jesse Jackson Jr.'s resignation could cost taxpayers $5.1 million. That news is no shock. Gee, really? Do, uh, do bureaucrats waste taxpayer money? No. No, tell me no. It never happens. Surprise, Pennsylvania College slashes instructors' hours to avoid Obamacare. Mm, yeah, this is going to happen everywhere, folks. Um, if you're working a job right now that's 40 hours a week, be prepared to have it slashed to 30 hours a week. And if you're working 30 hours a week, be prepared to have it slashed to 20 hours a week. See, employers are, are not going to be able to afford Obamacare. We saw what a Denny's restaurant already announcing us, an Obamacare surcharge on the receipts uh, on, on what they charge customers for food and cutting the hours of employees. This is going to happen across the economy where you're going to have to have now three different jobs, none of which have health insurance coverage and all of which pay less than the one good job you used to have before Obamacare required employers to pay these ridiculous monopolistic fees to a failed corrupt system of health insurance and disease care that we call modern medicine. So instead of solving, you know, instead of Obamacare actually addressing the causes of disease, nutritional deficiencies and GMOs and aspartame and so on, instead of doing that, all they did is shuffle the money around and create another monopoly and then force employers to, well, go out of business. And that's what we're going to see. Get ready. The next four years are going to be really interesting. Now, here's an article that uh, I posted today. I think this is up on Infowars.com as well. Economic IQ test. Yeah, you ready for this test? It's time to test your IQ. Here's the test. If the national debt doesn't matter, as Timothy Geithner says when he says, hey, let's just eliminate the debt ceiling. We don't need a debt ceiling. Let's have infinite debt. If the national debt doesn't matter, folks, then why are we still paying federal income taxes? Huh? Think about that. Now, 
really, we pay about $2.4 trillion a year in taxes to the federal government, both from personal taxes and corporate taxes. Well, $2.4 trillion a year comes to about, what, $200 billion a month. Well, why can't the federal government just eliminate the IRS, eliminate all taxes completely, and just have the Fed create another $200 billion a month on top of the $80 billion a month that they're creating right now to buy U.S. Treasury debt through QE Unlimited, as, as they called it? Uh, now, I, I know those of you out there are saying, well, wait a minute, if we do that, we're going to debase the currency, we're going to devalue the money supply, we're going to hyperinflate. Well, we're doing that anyway, folks. We're doing that anyway. So why not have the federal government just create all the tax money, you know, the equivalent of all the taxes, just create it, eliminate all taxes, federal taxes, let people keep the money, let employers keep the money, create more jobs, have more economic abundance, have more savings in our homes, and just have the Fed create that money. Because they did it for the bankers. Remember, when they needed a trillion dollars to bail out the banks, they just created the money out of thin air as new debt, of course, to the Federal Reserve, the private banking corporation, Federal Reserve. They just created the money when the wealthy needed it. But when they want you to pay them, they say, oh, the government needs revenue. We need your tax money to build schools and bridges and roads. That is a myth, folks. That is a total delusion. The government doesn't need your money to pay for anything. They can create all the money they want because they're doing it anyway. So what is the point? And this is where the IQ test comes in. What is the point of the federal income tax? If not to raise revenue, it's to control you, folks. It's to suppress you. It's to keep you down, to limit your economic mobility so that you can never compete with the ultra-wealthy, so that you stay in that little box of economic enslavement from which you can never escape and never stop working. That's the point of the federal income tax. Stay with us a lot more straight, straight ahead here on The Alex Jones Show. We'll be right back after this break. Cash. We're bringing us back in on the Alex Jones Show. Thanks for joining us again today on the day after Thanksgiving, broadcasting live from Austin, Texas, the InfoWars studios. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, editor of Natural News, filling in for Alex today. Hope you've enjoyed the show so far. We've got a lot more coming up for you, including a couple of uh, fascinating guests. Uh, Mike Bundren and Ed Group are coming up here on the show. We've also got some other video segments for you straight ahead, some special reports in fact, we've got one coming up right now on uh, police, well, not right now, but in a few minutes from David Ortiz, InfoWars reporter, on the abuse of citizens by police. And that's always, I'm not even going to watch that because it, it's, it's always sad for me to see uh, that happening because I know so many good cops. You know, I know, I mean, you know, I used to volunteer for the uh, Tucson Police Foundation in uh, Arizona. And we would raise money for cops and, and we would, you know, we would hang out with cops and talk to them about their needs and, and check out their training facilities and, and, and all these kinds of things. I even, I even trained with some cops in some, some uh, DT, uh, defensive tactics, hand-to-hand -hand combat, that kind of thing. And, you know, most of the cops out there are good people. They're, they're trying to do the right thing. <clears throat> but occasionally you get bad cops. Or in certain cities you have sometimes a... a, a a, a dominant culture of, of evil or abuse that, that happens in the police. And, you know, uh, historically that, that's happened in many places, uh, Chicago, New York, <laughs> Miami. Need I, I mean, if you, if you look up bad cops in the encyclopedia, it probably says Miami, okay? That's how bad it is there. But lots of other places where it becomes a culture. But, you know, the, 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 the problem is the lack of accountability. And it's the same problem we have at the federal level. Anytime you have a, a system of power, whether it's police or the Federal Reserve or an election voting system based on complete fraud, where, wherever you lack accountability, you're going to have corruption. That's just human nature. If you lack accountability and transparency, you are going to have corruption. And when power is concentrated into the hands of the few, you are going to have oppression. You are going to have a, the cancerous growth of more power at the expense of human dignity, at the expense of human liberty. This is what Thomas Jefferson warned us about. This is what the Founding Fathers tried to structure 
so that we could prevent the cancerous growth of a power structure known as government. That's the point of the Bill of Rights. That's the point of the Fourth Amendment. That is the point of saying that all powers not specifically granted to the federal government are reserved for the people and the states. The Ninth and Tenth uh, Amendments. That's the point of it. You know, it's funny. You should do this, folks. If you have a liberal friend out there, ask them some sometime. Say, hey, um, hey, liberal friend, do you think do you think that government should have any limits whatsoever on its power, or should government just have unlimited power? Knowing, by the way, that Hitler was an example of unlimited government power. That Stalinist Russia was an, uh, another example of unlimited government power. You know, Mao in China and so on. Do you think government should be limited in any way whatsoever? And if they think about it, if they're honest, they will say to you, well, yeah, I think maybe we should have some kind of limit on government power, some kind of limit. And all you got to do is ask them, well, what kind of shape and structure should those limits be? I mean, what should be the limits of government power? Like, for example, should the government be able to simply arrest and assassinate and interrogate anybody at once, at will, at any time, without charge, without any kind of legal defense, without due process? And, and, and your friend will probably say, oh, no, government should not be allowed to do that. There should be a basic respect of due process. And then you nail them. You say, Obama signed the NDAA on, on New Year's Eve last year, 2011 that specifically authorizes secret kill lists, secret arrest, imprisonment without charge, the complete abolition of due process. Do you agree with that? And then you got them because they have to admit, well, they, they, either, they either agree with total tyranny or they disagree with Obama because those two ideas cannot be reconciled, okay? They are self-contradictory. You cannot have liberty and tyranny together. You have to, you have to decide which one you stand for. And that's bottom line in everything that we talk about here at InfoWars. Anyway, uh, let me get back to the news. I keep getting distracted with commentary here. Here, here are some of the headlines coming out today. Uh, Human Rights Watch warns of robotic war crimes. They have put out a warning, which actually echoes the same warning that Alex has warned you about in InfoWars, and I've even written about this as well. We've all warned about this. In fact, here's a story by Paul Joseph Watson about armed drones to patrol the highways by 2025. You can check that out on InfoWars.com. But the Human Rights Watch group is saying, if we keep going in the direction we're going with the development of humanoid-shaped robots that can navigate terrain, that can target uh, uh, civilians, potentially, you know, human targets that have infrared cameras to see heat from, you know, um, warm bodies that they can then target, that can carry weapons. They, they, they are being engineered to carry uh, uh, semi-automatic rifles on the robot. If we keep going in this direction, it's only a matter of time before some tyrant that sits in power, you know, it's not going to be Obama, hopefully, hopefully he'll be uh, out of power long before this happens, but some future tyrant like Obama, who doesn't respect due process, could say, hey, I'm just going to unleash uh, 100,000 armed robots, hunter killers on the uh, Texans, let's say, because we don't like the way Texans are talking about not giving up their guns. So we're going to unleash an army of Terminators on the Texan people. What's to stop them from doing that? Nothing. Nothing. You see, the reason that we have soldiers take an oath today is so that there is some resistance to an order that says, go murder all these civilians or go invade this state or go kill these families or drop bombs on these innocent neighborhoods, which is happening, you know, in the Middle East right now. Human beings are resistant. At least they, they have, there's some chance that they can resist the insanity, that they can resist the tyranny and say no. They can decide to say no because as we opened up the show with, Human beings have free will. They have the ability to make that decision. But if you have a robot in there, a Terminator, hunter, killer robot that's just following orders with no thinking, no consciousness, no soul whatsoever, then that's out the window. They can order the robots to go in and just mass murder anybody they want. And that's what the military wants. They want to take the humanity out of war, the humanity out of the chain of command, so that all they have is just they press a button, they unleash humanoid robots to go in and take out whatever enemy they, that they say is bad, which, of course, eventually is going to be 
anybody who loves liberty, anybody who believes in freedom, anybody who believes in, you know, the republic, basically, anybody who follows Ron Paul or his philosophies, more importantly than the person, they will be targeted by autonomous robotic killing machines. And that's, that's going to happen if we don't stop it. And it could happen in the next generation, okay? The next 20 to 25 years, it could happen. Now, along those lines, by the year 2025, armed drones to patrol highways. Uh, here we go. You're going to be chased down by highway drones that the LAPD will probably uh, uh, buy and deploy on the highways. It was, this was from the 2012 LA Design Challenge. And manufacturers such as Honda, BMW, and General Motors are all looking at concept vehicles that are actually drones. Oh, yeah, you're going to get chased down by a drone armed with weapons, <laughs> EMP weapons, in this case, to disable your car. How beautiful is that? Mm -hmm. See, this is the problem with technology without philosophy. If you have technology with no ethics, you end up with technology being exploited and abused by those who desire power over others. And there's nothing wrong with technology per se, but I've warned many times about runaway science, bad science that's used to control people, to poison the planet, you know, GMOs, uh, vaccines laced with mercury, formaldehyde, MSG, uh, fluoride in the water that's not even real fluoride, for example. These, these are examples of runaway bad science that actually harms humanity rather than helps it. All right, um, another story, we had this massive pileup in Texas. Yesterday, in southeast Texas, two dead, a 100-vehicle pileup. Now, if you're not in Texas, you might think, why, why does this matter to me? It's a metaphor for what's going on. First of all, it was dense fog. When people drive into dense fog, they, for some reason, this is a, this is a human trait, they don't slow down. They just assume that the fog isn't really obscuring any danger. Maybe they just think positive. Hey, stay positive in the fog. Keep going 70. <laughs> that's like, that's like the, uh, the fatal optimist out there. Stay positive. There, there couldn't be a, an overturned tractor trailer in this dense fog on the interstate. So just keep barreling through there, guys. You know, <laughs> pedal to the metal. Stay positive. Well, the problem is that that doesn't work when there is a tractor trailer overturn on the highway. And we're showing you some images right now for those of you watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. A hundred vehicles involved, unfortunately two people killed, over 50 injured. And, and it didn't need to happen if people would just slow down when they see fog. Because they overdrive their stopping distance. They, by the time they, they see an accident, it's already 10 feet in front of them and they're doing 70 miles an hour and then it's just, you know, physics takes over. But the point of all of this is, and by the way, you know, may they rest in peace, the souls that died in that accident. I don't mean to make light of them, of their deaths at all. But to say that this is a metaphor for what we're ha what's happening economically in America. We are driving, we are barreling into the fog of economic enslavement, of global debt, of uh, currency debasement. We are barreling through that at not 70 miles an hour, not 80 miles an hour, but 100 miles an hour into a dense fog without any idea whether there's a wreck on the road in front of us, metaphorically speaking, with economics. And there is a wreck on the road in front of us. It's called the global debt collapse, and it is coming. And we're not going to be able to see it in time. And we are going to collide with that wreck on the road, so to speak. And Obama wants us to drive faster into it, which some people say maybe that's a good thing because the economic collapse will come sooner and we will, you know, learn the hard lessons of human civilization. We'll be able to, to recover from it more quickly. But in any, in any case, it's going to be bad. It's going to be a massive economic train wreck, like the entire nation is barreling at 100 miles an hour into a dense fog with massive wreckage all over the road, and they have no idea what they're about to run into. So that, if you can visualize that, that wreck of 100 vehicles in the fog on the highway, that is a metaphor for what's going to be happening with our economy soon. So watch out for that. Here it comes. Might be a good time to bail out of the car or at least slow down and pull to the side, buy some gold and silver, insulate yourself from, from what is coming so that you're not harmed by it. All right. Now, we've got a video coming up with David Ortiz, a special report about good cop, bad cop. 
And this is going to show you some images and uh, some disturbing scenes of police brutality. I want to preface this by saying, again, not all cops are, are bad. I know a lot of good cops. There are many sheriffs out there who are fighting for liberty. But there is abuse out there. There is brutality of innocent Americans. And that is the subject of this video. So watch it and spread the word. And we'll be right back after this video with more. Take a look. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Ortiz. They take an oath to protect and serve, yet despite this noble mission statement, the law enforcement profession remains extremely polarizing. The main reasons for the public cynicism is abuse of power and immunity from the law. Let's take a look at some examples of these abuses. Meet Officer Joseph Schmidt of the Oaklawn, Illinois Police Department. As seen on this video, in 2010, he was off duty at a Hooters restaurant when the then 54-year-old Olivier Torres got into an argument with a waitress over her bill. Officer Schmidt soon intervened in the matter, and despite the fact that Ms. Torres was clearly not a threat, he decided to arrest her and did so by pulling her hair and using excessive force. According to Ms. Torres' attorney, many witnesses say the officer also slapped her. Soon after this incident, a judge ruled that Ms. Torres and not the officer was in the wrong, sentencing her to 200 days in jail. She only served about 94 of those days. The judge also stated that Ms. Torres had a history of DUIs and other violations. Repeated calls to the Oaklawn, Illinois Police Department to comment on this matter were not answered. Now let's take a look at this bad cop. In 2009, Lincoln, Rhode Island police officer Edward Krawitz kicked an intoxicated handcuffed woman who was seated on a curb in the head after she kicked his shin. Despite being found guilty of felony battery with a dangerous weapon, the officer was only sentenced to counseling and 10 years probation. He also resigned after public pressure. However, he may still be eligible for a pension. According to Reason Magazine, one reason why officers are treated above the law is due to legislation called the Police Officers' Bill of Rights. As a result of this legislation, officers in dozens of U.S. states are allowed to experience godlike privileges. Among them, unlike a member of the public, the officer under investigation gets a, quote, cooling off period before he has to respond to any questions. Unlike a member of the public, the officer under investigation is also privy to the name of his complainants and their testimonies against him before he is interrogated. Unlike a member of the public, the officer under investigation is to be interrogated at a, quote, reasonable hour with a union member present. Unlike a member of the public, the officer can only be questioned by one person during his interrogation. Unlike a member of the public, the officer can be interrogated only for, quote, reasonable periods, which shall be timed to allow for such personal necessities and rest periods as are reasonably necessary. Unlike a member of the public, the officer under investigation cannot be, quote, threatened with disciplinary action at any point during the investigation. If he is threatened with punishment, whatever he says following the threat cannot be used against him. Now, contrary to these thugs, there are some hero cops. Meet Officer Ivan Marcano of the NYPD. Last month, the officer was off duty in the Bronx when he saw two individuals trying to rob someone at gunpoint. Officer Marcano fired and killed one of the perpetrators. The other robber and a getaway driver ran away. However, Officer Marcano, who was shot in the chest and will live, is credited by the victim as having saved his life. And here we also have some video of a heroic cop named Officer Jimmy Jalil of the Boca Raton, Florida Police Force. In late 2010, Officer Jalil was called to a car crash scene. Soon after his arrival, the car which crashed caught fire, trapping the victim who had broken her legs inside. Officer Jalil swiftly sprung into action and after shooting the passenger window, pulled the woman out of the vehicle. According to witnesses, there is no doubt the female victim would have burned to death had she not been rescued. To these last two officers, we salute you. Well, that's all for this edition of Bad Cop, Good Cop. I'm David Ortiz reminding you that an officer is only a hero if he treats you with respect. All right, thanks for joining us. This is the Alex Jones Show. If you're just joining us, 
This is Mike Adams filling in for Alex today on this day after Thanksgiving, broadcasting live from the InfoWars studios in Austin, Texas. And thank you for continuing with us. We've got teens in custody after Woodland Mall fight last night, or early this morning, actually. A disturbance leads to a scare at West Roads Mall. I, I think uh, that was where there was a shooting a couple of years ago. We've got Black Friday arrests caught on camera. And by the way, check out DrudgeReport.com for some breaking news on, on the Black Friday shoppers and stampedes and people uh, pulling weapons on each other, standing in line. And footage of people going after, I guess, discounted cell phones. They're, they're, they're fighting and trampling each other to get these discounted cell phones. Hey, don't they know they can get a free Obama phone? They don't even need to wait in line. And fight over it. Didn't they know that? Man, somebody needs to update these people. Give them a sign, something. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think, I think that if you went to these lines and just held up a sign that said free vaccines while you're standing in line, probably 90% would say, yeah, go ahead, you know, shoot me up with a vaccine. <laughs> Why not? Standing in line already. All right. Um, Alex asked me this morning uh, to, to cover a little bit about Texas secession. And so my thoughts on that subject were encapsulated in an article I published recently on Natural News about why Texas in particular is well positioned to actually secede. Now, in, in effect, what Alex has been promoting, you know, last week when he called for perhaps a second American revolution, but it's really the, the reconstitution of America, not to be separate, but to be together with the restoration of constitutional liberty. That's what we need. And so neither Alex nor myself wants Texas to be a separate nation. But we want Texas to be part of a union based in liberty, to restore the Constitution, to limit government as it is supposed to be limited under the Constitution, and especially to protect the people under the Bill of Rights. But theoretically, if Texas were to secede, it could succeed as a nation state better than any other state. And here's why. Check this out. And I, I gave this, this list. But did you know that Texas is the only state with its own power grid? That's right. The only state with its own, well, I should say in the 48 contiguous states, the only state with its own power grid. Everything else is connected to the, either the eastern grid or the western grid. Texas can grow more than enough food to feed itself. And not a lot of states can do that. Maybe California can, but not a lot of other states. Texas is the energy empire of America, the energy hub. I don't know if you've ever gone onto Google Earth and or maps, you know, Yahoo Maps or whatever, and looked at the satellite images of the uh, the Texas, the Houston, Texas port, where that river comes in off of um, up from Galveston. You go north and then you head into Houston on this river. That is lined with petroleum reserves. Massive, mass. I don't know how many billions of gallons of petroleum are stored right in that area. Plus, Texas has physical possession of the refineries and, and is very close to all the offshore drilling rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Texas also has a huge amount of natural gas and even uh, solar resources if you go that direction. Uh, Texas is the energy capital of America. In addition, Texas has technology and telecommunications, a lot of high tech in Texas, including in the Austin area and, of course, Dallas, Fort Worth. It's even got the basic infrastructure of a space program. Texas has natural resources and a can do attitude. And guess what? A lot of firearms in the hands of patriots and rugged individuals who know how to survive. And they're not giving those guns up. Not for nothing. Nope. You talk to Texans and they'll tell you, not giving it up for anything. Anyway, straight ahead, Ed Group is coming up, so stay with us here on The Alex Jones Show. We'll be right back with that interview and much more. We are into the second hour on The Alex Jones Show. Thank you for joining us. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in for Alex today. And we've got Ed Group from Global Healing Center coming up as our guest for the next, well, 45 minutes or so. Plus, we'll be taking calls. So if you'd like to call in, go ahead and dial, what is it, 800-259-9231. That's right, 800-259-9231. And the topic for your call, please keep it on topic because our guest is Ed Group, an expert in hmm, the poisons in your food and detoxing yourself from the poisons that are in your food, including 
chemtrails, heavy metals, aluminum, mercury, lead, arsenic, cadmium, you name it. If you want to get it out of your body or avoid even putting it into your body, Ed Group knows his stuff. And the reason I asked him on today was because this is the holiday season when a lot of us seem to eat indiscriminately. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You might have engaged in a little bit of that yesterday yourself, and you're probably sitting there uh, feeling your, your inflated belly and thinking, oh my gosh, why did I eat that yesterday? Well, if you want to actually improve your health, either now or, hey, after New Year's Eve, it's up to you. You got to have the right knowledge. And so this is the guy with the knowledge, Ed Group. So hey, let me know, guys, when he is ready, and, and we'll bring him in. Oh, he is ready. Okay, awesome. So anyway, that's the basic introduction. Uh, Ed, Ed Group, a global healing center, expert in food detox and nutritional supplements that protect the body from all of those nasty chemicals and heavy metals and even light metals that are found in foods. Ed, welcome to the Alex Jones Show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Good, good to have you on, man. Um, so, now this segment, not all, not all the radio stations carry this segment, so, you know, we'll recap a little bit of this in a, in a couple of minutes. But, uh, first of all, what, do you, what are the most toxic foods that people tend to get during the holiday season? Well, I mean, pretty much all the foods are toxic during the holiday season. I mean, even the organic foods, that's because everything is cooked and a lot of it is canned and a lot of it is processed. And not only that, it contains a lot of artificial ingredients. Uh, some of it could be GMO. It's a lot of sugar. If I was to pick my number one toxic holiday food, it would probably be dessert. And the reason why is because people indulge so much over the holiday season. They eat two, three, four times the amount that they normally do. That's why some people gain five to ten pounds from November to January. But the most difficult thing for the body to handle is the amount of food and what happens to the food when they eat it because also during the holiday season people drink a lot more alcohol they drink a lot more coffee they drink a lot more diet drinks and they decrease the amount of water that they put in their system so what happens let's say yesterday for example when everybody was pigging out from the morning all the way through the evening watching football and doing all the normal things you also have to factor in during the holidays that most people are sedentary or they're not moving around, they're not exercising as much. So if you were to put every single thing that someone ate yesterday, for example, in a trash can and put it out in the 98.6 degree heat, which is the body temperature, what you have is a combination of foods which are actually more toxic than the foods themselves because when you mix wine or beer and turkey and dressing and all these things together, it just forms this chemical slew inside your system. And <laughs> that explains the Friday hangover. It's a liquid either when they, when they swallow it down because they're in a hurry to eat. They want to just force more food and more food down into their system. So that also becomes a major strain on the digestive system and, and the lack of enzymes that they have to break it down. So that food stays in the intestinal tract way, way too long, and then they keep doing that over and over and over, and then... The proteins putrefy, the carbohydrates ferment, and then the fats turn rancid. Uh, and that's where you're starting to get all these real does, toxic compounds. That doesn't sound good, Ed, uh, like four-day-old turkey making its way through your body with some beer. <laughs> all right, well, uh, stay with us, folks. We've got Ed Group continuing on the other side of this break with more talk, also about how you can avoid toxic holiday foods and still enjoy your holiday. Stay with us. Yeah, good music Why choice. That's the company store song, isn't it? Yeah. Company store. See, you know, after that, uh, um, Americans think they're free today. You're not free, folks, as long as you're stuck in that economic enslavement cycle of endless taxation and, and mandatory expenditures with Obamacare and things like that. It's still the company store, folks. It's just It just looks a little different, and it's it's operated under the illusion of freedom. But anyway... Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm obviously not Alex. This is Mike Adams, the health ranger, filling in for Alex today. And we've got our guest, Ed Group, joining us to talk about the toxic foods that we tend to run into during the holiday season and what you can do to avoid those toxic elements in the foods, as well as then detox yourself after you've gorged yourself with all the GMO turkey and you know heavy metals in the foods and everything else that we tend to eat during the holiday season. So, Ed... 
uh, not everybody heard what you said in the last segment. Could you recap very quickly that combination that you're talking about, the beer and the turkey and the sedentary uh, lifestyle during these holiday uh, uh, breaks? Go, go ahead and just recap that for well, us. We if were you just talking about what the toxic holiday foods are, and I was saying that pretty much everything is toxic out there because it's boxed and canned and cooked and everything else. But really the main problem that we've seen dealing with people over the years is that it's it's not only the toxic food but the combination of those foods once they sit in your system. When you mix alcohol and beer and white sugar together and desserts and stuffing and breads with gluten and GMOs together, you, you have this toxic chemical slew that sits inside the digestive system way, way too long, and the proteins turn putrefactic, the carbohydrates ferment, and the fats turn rancid, and that's where you're getting the real, real toxic chemicals that are leaking back into the bloodstream because... Uh, people overeat during the holidays, and they don't have as many bowel movements, and they're generally extremely constipated as well So, because they're not actively moving. They're sedentary. They're sitting down watching football games. They're, they've eaten too much food, and they can't move. So uh, that's what happens with the majority of people, and that's why people are lethargic, and they feel bad generally over the holidays because they're not moving that stuff out of their system fast but, enough. But, Ed, there's a lot of social pressure during the holidays, you know, to just – Sit down, join the family, you know, let your food guard down for a couple of days and just, you know, just eat whatever's in front of you. I mean, that's that's part of the culture. So I think I think some people listening would say that you and I are maybe a little too uptight and we should, you know, we should stop harping on these people for what they're going to eat during the holidays. What, what would you say to someone who has that comment? Well, I would just say that there's, you know, even if you want to eat all that toxic food, there's still ways that you can get it out of your system really fast. I mean, what my recommendation is, first of all, if you don't want to radically change your Thanksgiving Day dinner or your Christmas or holiday meals, just switch it all to organic. Right there, you're already saving yourself a lot of chemicals and GMOs and other things. But the best and the easiest way to do it is to chew your food really good before you swallow it because when your food mixes with the enzymes in your mouth, your enzymes are already breaking a lot of that food down and taking care of the, uh, some of those chemicals, and you're able to digest, and you get full faster that way, so you end up not eating as much. Another thing I recommend is not to eat after 8 p.m., and one of the... One of the best things that we hear every single year is in the easiest way to get all that stuff out of your system is to use an oxygen-based intestinal cleanser, which is something you can take that will release oxygen and choose through everything. And by the next morning, all that stuff is completely out of your system. Instead of sitting in there three to four to five days and, and being able to turn into all those chemicals, which will then leak into your bloodstream. So the key is... When it comes in, get it out as fast as you can. And the only thing safe to use, would, like I said, would be an oxygen cleanser. I mean, some people actually take psyllium husk or some extra fiber, but that ends up a lot of times uh, expanding in the intestines and blocking them up even further. Well, but what about the greens? For example, the, the Interfood products that are sold here at the InfoWars store, those are really good. It isn't can't you use those defensively where let's say before your 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 big dinner or something you you know you drink a superfood shake a green superfood shake and then that way you eat less of the toxic food and also you've got all those greens and, and other herbs in there to buffer your body to help protect your body from the toxic things that you're eating does that does that make sense oh absolutely i mean absolutely if the, if the general public did that it would be it would be great, and we would save a lot of time and, you know, save a lot of heartache. Another good thing, which I recommend to people, is for them to take some enzymes, some digestive enzymes, you know, 20 minutes before their meal or right at the time that they, that they are eating after their first bite of the meal. And that will help them break down the food better. Uh, it's, it's been studied that most people run out of enzymes by the time they're 28 years old, and that's... Uh, just because of all the cooked foods and because everything that the body has to produce to break these things down on a regular basis. So enzymes would be another trick that someone could do to uh, help, you know, help their digestive tract, yeah. you know, move things through a little bit better. And to drink water between meals instead of all the dehydrating things that they're drinking, like the beer and the alcohol and the sodas, the diet drinks. Uh, over the holidays, you also see an increased amount of dehydration. So if you're drinking a good purified water between your meals, that'll also help move the, the toxic food and the sludge through.
through your intestines faster. Uh, we're li listening to an interview, folks, with Ed Group from GlobalHealingCenter.com, an expert in uh, de detoxification. And that's a good point there, Ed. You can, you know, you can enjoy your family time and just drink water. No one's going to give you a hard time for not drinking, let's say, diet soda or even not drinking a beer. You can just say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just drinking water today and enjoying time with family, having some, some of the Thanksgiving meal or Christmas meal or whatever you're focused on, and, and drinking some purified water. That can go a long way towards helping you, you know, eliminate all these toxins that you might be taking in. Yeah, and when they, you know, offer you that extra piece of pie or the extra serving, you can just turn that down and just say, no, you know, I'm not ready for that right now. And, and try to get up and walk around and move around a little bit more, too. I mean, you can, you know, you can walk around, do some jumping jacks or something while you're watching TV <laughs> or, you know, just stay, try, to get a, try to be a little bit more active during the holidays, and that will help push everything down as well. All right, you ready to take a, a few calls, Ed? We've got some callers on the line. Sure. All right. Let's go to John in Texas. John, you're on the phone with Ed Group. Welcome to the show. Um, hello, guys. How are you doing? Uh, I have some, uh, a couple of big issues, but it's not with me. Um, I've been pretty healthy for a while now with a bunch of organic and listening to Dr. Uh, Wallach and Ben Feuds. But my wife never really believed me, and she worked at a hospital. And she, recent, and she took the H1N1 shot. At the same time, she took a vaccine shot. Whoa. And now, all this, and she's, four, listen, she's 40 years old now. And she was perfectly healthy before. Now her blood pressure is off the roof. She has type 2 diabetes. This was within a year of the shot. And now her gallbladder is at, 10, at 15%. And she just went to the doctor. And I'm pretty desperate here because they want to schedule an appointment to take her gallbladder out already. Oh, man. And I, I just don't know what to do. Um, well, I've well, told her. Let, let, let's give this to Ed, but let me preface that by saying those vaccine shots do contain, as the CDC has admitted, they do contain mercury, they do contain formaldehyde, MSG, antibiotics, and aluminum. And those combinations are, of course, very toxic to many organs in the body. What are your thoughts, Ed, on uh, his wife's uh, reaction to the vaccines? Well, you know, I'd like to add one more thing with the with the vaccines is recombinant uh, RNA and DNA fragments, which I think now they're they're altering to to cause genetic changes within your own body as well. But uh, without having a full, I mean, the most you can do, and what I tell people is to just try to educate them as much as possible. You know, when we had patients that would bring their husband or their wife in and say, "We want you to do this," but then that person wasn't. The first thing we would do, of course, would would be to educate them and on all those different things and how to eliminate toxins from your daily life and from your environment in which you live, your work environment, your home environment. But with what you're just giving, uh, the information you're just giving me, what I would do is just probably say to go ahead and email me or contact us at uh, support at globalhealingcenter.com with a, a little more detailed uh, list of what you're going through. And maybe we can provide you with uh, some information that's in a good, readable format uh, to give to your wife uh, and let her know. Because ultimately, I mean, that's a really tough situation. That happens all the time is with, with loved ones and and siblings and everything else, you know what's good for them. You've done all the research, and it's that trying to convince them. You know, I have a good friend that, you know, went through a divorce, and uh, the, his wife, his ex-wife, just to get back with him, took the kid, took his two girls in and got them vaccinated oh, recently, man. and it just like, to get back at him. Punitive it's, vaccination. It's Great. a sad situation out there, but just try to, you know, get his get her as much educational material as you can. All right, Ed, uh, the good, good answer is just remember, folks, when you call in, if you ask medical type of questions, remember that we can't diagnose or offer treatment options here, and, and neither I nor Ed can do that. But uh, hopefully that helped you there, John. Thanks for your call. Let's go to Josh in Wisconsin. Very quickly, Josh, we've only got about a minute left. Uh, you're, on, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. What's your question? Mike Adams, uh, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. Um, well, uh, um, I'm sitting here with my son and my other buddy. Uh, at the Hardee's here, and, uh, you know, probably just got done inducing ourselves, you know, with who knows what kind of, act, uh, you know, uh, experiment uh, today. But um, just, uh, I don't know, I've been just seeing uh, un unreal but surreal stuff the last couple months, and uh, it's just, it's very sickening, and, uh, you know, I've seen, I've been at restaurants, and um, these people are just... Uh, I heard this one guy say, 
Oh, instead of for my hash browns, instead of you know uh, the oil you guys use, can you get, can I please uh, just uh, get uh, the um, organic butter with that? You know, I mean. Well, Josh, totally, re truly restaurants uh, are not gonna are not gonna you know obviously be your choice for healthy food. There's a lot of hidden GMOs in restaurants. Uh, sorry to cut you off, off there. We got to go to break. But uh, interesting comments <laughs> there. And we've got Ed Group on the line with us who continues with us after this break with more calls on food and detox and how you can protect yourself from holiday food. So stay with us here on The Alex Jones Show. We'll be right back after this break. Thanks for joining us here on the Alex Jones Show on this Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in for Alex today. And we've got Ed Group, a detox expert on the line. We've been taking some interesting calls, including a guy who called from Hardee's <laughs> restaurant with his, with his kids in the background, uh, lamenting about how unhealthy the food probably was there. Uh, that that's that that takes some guts to call in from uh, from Hardee's to, <laughs> and, and ask about detox, but uh, hey, folks, watch out! Check the KFC menu for those of you who eat fried chicken. The KFC has MSG in almost almost everything on their menu has MSG in it. Okay, almost everything. Read read their facts if you want to see what's really in the food. I think no restaurant uses MSG more than Kentucky Fried Chicken. But I want to show you what I'm eating today. Uh, in addition to my normal, for those of you watching on PrisonPlanet.tv, in addition to my normal um, chocolate avocado superfood smoothie that's here in this glass mason jar and mostly consumed by now, I've also got my non-GMO organic gluten-free pancakes right here showing you on camera. Brought these from home. Yeah, I made these this morning. Aren't those beautiful? With coconut oil on a non-stick, I mean a non-non-stick pan. I just use stainless steel pans with a big copper bottom. I don't cook on Teflon or non-stick surfaces. I don't use uh, gluten in the pancakes. I don't use butter on them. I just, you know, make healthy stuff and bring it in, and that's what powers me through these InfoWars shows. Ed Group, what did you have for breakfast this morning, man? I had for breakfast this morning a juice, actually, a green juice. <laughs> Uh, what was in it? What was in it? Come yesterday on. I had some vegan, this was my Thanksgiving dinner, I had vegan stuffing, which normally I'm about 95% raw food, but yesterday uh, I actually gave in and had a, a small, multiple small servings, but uh, most of the day I actually ate raw yesterday and today. The only thing I had was uh, for our noon lunch, which was just a family get-together, was uh just some uh, different kinds of mushroom, organic vegan mushroom gravy with shiitake and portobello mushrooms and some other mushrooms in there that my wife cooked. And then I had a, uh, a vegan cornbread dressing and a little bit of organic mashed potatoes. And that was Wow. That. But a, a lot of people listening, though, Ed, are going to say, just like I mentioned in the last segment, that, you know, they don't know how to do that. They, they don't know those recipes and their families don't cook that way. They're going to have, you know, a big Christmas ham. They're going to have a big Thanksgiving turkey and they don't really know even where the turkey came from it's probably fed gmo corn to make it that big so they can sell it by the pound you know if you're if folks if you're eating <laughs> if you're eating non-organic uh beef or chicken or pork or turkey you know it's probably fattened up with gmos Is, isn't that true ed Yes, it is. I mean, and all the other stuff. I mean, most of those animals are schizophrenic at the time of butchering, which puts other uh, toxins into the meat. Um, you mean like hormones? Yeah, they're injected with hormones. They're injected with vaccinations. They're fed antibiotics. They're fed GMO corn and, and different types of uh, toxic feed to begin with. They're not range-fed. So, you know, maybe this year you can... Early now, Thanksgiving's over, but for Christmas, everybody can get together with their family, whoever's doing the purchasing, and and possibly look at local markets. You know, purchasing from local uh, farmers markets or getting shares locally or something like that, and then looking into for a meat choice, a better meat choice, either uh, wild game, venison, something like that, yeah. or a, a good source of range-fed organic fish or you know, other sources of meat. Yeah, hey, I, I saw, uh, I guess, about 20 turkeys, wild turkeys running around um, the ranch where I am in Texas, and uh neighbor neighbor walked by with a 
with a field shotgun and said, we're going to go get one of them. <laughs> so I said, well, <laughs> go for it, man. It's, that's healthier than eating the stuff you buy at the store. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's true wild game. That's how they used to do it a long time ago. And um, personally, I don't, eat, I don't eat meat, but that took me a long time to get to that. I don't recommend people just stop eating meat. I mean, I, I was having digestive problems in my, in my 20s because I was raised on meat and potatoes and, and you know, dairy and everything else. But um, I slowly eliminated it for health reasons um, over a long period of time. At first, I just cut it out immediately, and then I got sick. I was pale. I wasn't, you know. I had very low energy, and then I realized real fast that I needed to take my time with this and let my body adapt to it over a long period of time. And, and some people make that, a lot of people actually make that mistake. They think they can just cut out meat completely, and then everything's fine, especially the O-blood type people. And uh, what they need to do is take it slow. I mean, everything yeah. should be a slow transition so the body has time to adapt. All right, can you stay with us for just a couple more minutes on the other side of this break, Ed? Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, well, well, we'll be right back after this message then with more, just a few more minutes with that group. And then we've got a video from Alex coming up on the madness of crowds and the Black Friday craziness that we witnessed in the early hours of this morning. All right, we're back with Ed Group, food expert, which is a very relevant topic during this holiday season. Also, we're, we're going to take a couple more calls here. We've got uh, Fred and Kenneth and others on the line. And then after that, we've got a video from, where to go, from Alex called um, Black Friday Secrets Revealed. He just shot that video this morning, and I haven't even seen it yet. We're going to show that video here and then have some commentary about what's going on in the American culture where... People are trained to line up and literally stampede over each other to get discounts off of electronics that they probably don't even need, that, that, that tend to even enslave them in some ways, like your, you know, your iPhone tracker device and your, <laughs> your brainwashing flat panel TV device that inserts uh, false ideas into your head through corporate-run news and um, so-called entertainment programming. Anyway... That's another topic. We've got a couple calls for Ed Group here. You still with us, Ed? Pretty soon. On Just on that note, you're going to start seeing people lining up for food, too, because we're going to be running into some food shortages, and with all the chemicals and toxins being sprayed on the food, that's a, it's going to be a major issue. That's true. The big shortage from the, the drought of last summer, of, of the most recent summer, that's going to kick in in about January and February. People are going to see food prices really skyrocket. And that doesn't even count, you know, inflation due to currency debasement. So anyway, okay, we, let's take some calls. Let's go to Fred in Ohio. Fred, you're on the air with Ed Group here on the Alex Jones Show. How can we help you, Fred? Uh, the, these uh, delegates casting their votes on December uh, 7th should be put to shame. As an American, I could not cast a vote for Barry Sator, alias Obama, knowing that Obama is an illegitimate commander-in-chief being knowledgeable about General Sam and the Admiral at Benghazi. Yes, yeah, sir, you mentioned, you mentioned Decem December 7th. Are you referring to um, World War II, or what, what, what's, what's that date? The delegates are to cast a vote on December the 7th. Oh, okay, okay. So well, that's what I'm talking about. So you're, you're, and knowing you're, your comments are well-received here, sir, but uh, they're a little bit off topic because uh, we've got a food expert on right now. Do you have... Uh, do you have anything related to the toxicity of, of holiday food? Uh, no, I do not. I uh, don't get you in very clear, so it's very hard. And trying to get a hold of Alex and you is very difficult. Hey, tell me about it, man. It's, it's even hard for me to get a hold of Alex. <laughs> He's a busy guy. But uh, I appreciate your call. Thank you for your comments. I think most of the listeners definitely agree with what you just said, but I, I want to keep it on topic. Go to Kenneth in Texas. Kenneth, you're on the air. Uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, you're you're live. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I need a email address to InfoWars to transfer some top secret files to Alex, and these files must go to Jesse Ventura as well. Do you have an email address? Well, I know that Showtips at InfoWars.com gets things here, uh, but have patience with it because there's a lot of email that comes in on all the email addresses. And, um, but that's, that's the best address to reach the crew here. They will review it. Uh, what's your name, sir? So maybe they can look out for your particular name on the email. I'm going to spell it for you. This is what it was sent to, infowars.com. 
My email address is you. No, no, wait, don't, don't don't give out your email address on the air. Um, just 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 your your name uh, is is Kenneth. The way you'll mark your email. Um, I don't know if it'll show Kenneth or not. Okay. On my How about this? Stay on the line. I'm I'm going to let you go, but you stay on the line, and we'll get you another email address that you can submit that to right now. Okay. I'm going to give you Dan Bedondi's email address. Well, the producer will. So. So thank you for your call. Stay on the line. They'll give you Badandi's address so you can get that to us here. Okay, sir? And, all right, and thank you for your call. Let's go to Roger in Arizona. Roger, you're on the air. Do you have a question for Ed Group? Yes, uh, hi, Mike. Hey. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Long-time listener, uh, first-time caller. Yeah, just over over yesterday, yeah, reading some of the labels, getting educated on the GMOs and all the products that are out there, uh, it, buying gen, buying uh, organic material and, and using that to, to prepare a, a nice, healthy meal for the family. You know, we've got family that, that comes over, they expect sauces and gravies and, you know, biscuits and all these different things. And I was reading the, the labels on a lot of those things. And, you know, there's soy lectin and neotame and aspartame. <laughs> yeah. and so it's almost impossible to get away from that. So if there's any, I guess my question is, is there any way to... to to try to 100% eliminate that those poisons from the diet. All right, that's that's to you, Ed. Go ahead. Uh, you have a lot of different uh, label ingredients that you want to try to avoid, and, and they're getting really tricky. I mean, natural flavors, even though it sounds like it's uh, it's okay, can be toxic. It can contain uh, MSG. You want to look out for soy lecithin, uh, titanium dioxide. I mean, there's a whole list of, of different ingredients that you want to avoid, and the best advice I can tell you is to get online. Usually that's what I do and try to find uh, recipes for um, different types of holiday snacks or holiday foods that you can make yourself using um, either grain-free or gluten-free flours. Um, you can also use uh, different types of ingredients, natural ingredients instead of toxic ingredients. Usually w whenever you buy anything in a box or pre-made, that's where you're going to have those preservatives and everything. It's a little bit more time-consuming to do things yourself, but, I mean, you should really be putting your energy into the food anyway. It makes it, it, it makes it taste better, and it's even healthier for you. So I would suggest that maybe taking this year and um, going on. There's a lot of recipes online. and I mean, Believe it or not, a lot of people are in the same situation that you are. And so um, you're not going to find those things at the store usually, even, uh, you know, even Whole Foods. 30% of their stuff is contains GMOs. So uh, well, you're going to want to just find the recipes from the people like myself and people, other people that have uh, been cooking and, and looking at different recipes and modified those recipes for gluten-free, vegan, or even, you know, even standard recipes that just don't include those toxic chemicals. Yeah, basically, you basically you're going to have to the ingredients cook yourself. the you way know, our grandparents did. Salt and non-toxic sugars and then mix it all together. I don't think you can hear me. And make your own uh, food. Hey, Ed, yeah, good good comments. I was just, sorry, I was trying to interject there to say you're gonna have, we're going to have to go back and cook the way our grandparents did, which is from raw materials, you know, like uh, unprocessed uh, ingredients and put those meals together from scratch is, is essentially it. Exactly. And, and to make sure that we get those, those materials as an organic material wherever possible or wildcrafted if not organic I want to thank you for your call roger and also ed thank you for joining us it's been a good segment with you and i want to remind those who are interested in detox check out ed's website he's got a blog on there as well globalhealingcenter.com and to remind you to eat healthy this holiday season thanks for joining us today ed thanks for having me on appreciate it everybody have a good happy healthy holiday season thank you ed it was it was great to have you on now we're going to shift gears and go to the TSA, no, I'm sorry, not TSA, the Black Friday Secrets video that Alex has just recorded this morning. We're going to run that video and then I'll be back after that video with some commentary on the video. It'll be ready here in just a second. And then we'll continue to take calls in uh, following that and in the, the next segment. Just cue me guys when it is ready. Now. Uh, okay, we're ready now. Let's go ahead and run that video. It's about five minutes long. This is Alex's commentary from this morning about Black Friday. Let's take a look. Many species of mammal will run themselves off of cliffs. Sheep will do it. Uh, you see whales that beach themselves sometimes for no reason. 
but not just mammals, other species will, will beach themselves or run off the edge of a cliff. We see what lemmings like to do. And we see this throughout human cultures when people become disconnected from the land, disconnected uh, from basic uh, human activities. And we are seeing this to an extreme degree with the disgusting manifestation that is the madness of Black Friday. Each year in the last decade, getting more and more insane the day after Thanksgiving. In some cases, thousands of people rushing into Walmarts, begging, screaming, grabbing, just getting something. I mean, I'm not saying that consumerism or wanting things or some materialism is purely evil. You need materialism, you need food, water, clothing, things to take care of yourself. But when it becomes the ultimate goal of your life and when just the action of going out almost like it's a hunting competition uh, and fighting over goods and just snatching something up and feeling like that you got uh, a part of the deal so you're a winner. It is at the heart of why our society is falling apart. It shows the triumph of empty hype, the triumph of empty fraud. Let me give you a segue example into the flu vaccine. I've covered this a lot on the radio. I've, I've read mainstream news articles saying there are no uh, side effects, period, from the flu shot. It cannot hurt you. Don't believe conspiracy theorists. Uh, don't believe wild rumors. And then I can show the CDC's own website, which you can go look up, with hundreds and hundreds of bad reactions, including death, comas, Guillain-Barre, neurological disorder, for every major vaccine. I mean, just go to CDC, side effects, adverse reactions, do it right now, cdc.gov. I've probably done this 20 times this year on the radio and TV, shown people this. But the hype, they have ads for flu shots on billboards, they, companies are pressuring people to take it, not just hospitals now, it is a cult. And it doesn't matter if all the studies show it doubles your chances of getting the flu that year or the next, that it's never been uh, created to actually block that year's flu. They've never guessed the strain. It is a total, complete, absolute, verified hoax. And I was reading a Fox News article and also a Wall Street Journal article this morning, something I already knew, that the best deals are the days after Christmas, that the best deals come even in January with overstock stuff, that the best deals are online. And that Black Friday is not even a good deal on average as a scam. So again, that's a hoax as well. But the standing in line all night, instead of spending time with your family, and then rushing in when the store opens uh, at midnight on Friday, going into the day of Friday, is just totally empty. And I know that many of us know and understand this. But if you look at the people socioeconomically, and I've got studies on this, you can just look at the poor crowds of people fighting and stumbling and trampling each other to death. These are the same people that want their free Obama phone. These are the same people that think higher taxes will somehow redistribute wealth to them. They're looking for a free ride. It's the lottery ticket crowd. And it's out there in every race, culture, religion, area of the world. George Orwell wrote about it in 1948, in 1984 about how in the future people only care about their lottery tickets and wouldn't care about their freedom, even though the whole lottery is obviously rigged. It's like people that go to Vegas. But under this new world order system, everything's geared to not just have that 20, 30% that we always know are want to be, you know, sucker chumps, willfully ignorant. But it's, it, it's an attempt to make the entire society that way and force you into it. It's like the hoax of the TSA, never caught one terrorist, government got the underwear bomber on the plane, came out in congressional testimony. You think the zombies that go to Black Friday know that? Do you think they know that? I mean, it's incredible. A few times over the years, we've needed something at the store and uh, some kind of electronics for the InfoWars operation with all our crew, and, and, and I've gone down, or the crew's gone down on Black Friday, and it's snatching and grabbing and angry people. In fact, I'm tempted just to go down there right now and show people what's going on, but you've seen it. You've experienced it. It is idiocy. If you like a nice camera to take beautiful images because you're in love with that, that's wonderful. But you don't want to go get in a fist fight for the camera. If you like a video game and like false reality, that's your issue. But what is this whole thing of getting obsessed with the fact that you've got to have it on this day and you've got to go fight with people? That's literally what it is. It's like a shark feeding frenzy, believing there's blood in the water, but it's not even a good deal. There's a lot of other observations. I just want to say this in closing. Look at China. And I know it's almost impossible to buy a lot of stuff that's not made in China by people that have forced abortions at their factories, that's in the news. 
mobile execution vans for political dissidents, look it up. Uh, suicide nets around the Apple factories, their subcontractors. Hellish stuff. People think, oh, I'm getting a good deal when I buy all this stuff. And really all you're doing is lowering your standard of living and your wages. Many All right, that was Alex Jones with his Black Friday secrets revealed. Some very good points that he made there. Let me recap some of what I got out of that in, in my own words because I think he's nailed it. I think he's right on target. That the Black Friday hype is really a, an artificial simulation of hunting. Uh, it, it, it's, it's people lining up and thinking they're going out into the wild, which is the mall, and that they are, are uh, overcoming uh, competitive hunters to snatch some valuable item to bring back home to the family to, to share in the spoils of their, of their hunting. But it's artificial. The whole thing is contrived. I think Alex called it there the, what, the, the triumph of empty materialism, which is a really good, uh, that, that's a good phrase to describe it. Because so much of what we have today is an artificial construct that simulates the reality we're supposed to be living in. So, for example, sports. You know, a lot of people were watching football yesterday, and nothing wrong with enjoying a game from time to time, but if you really get into it and you've got the sports worshipers, they are involved in a simulation of tribal warfare. That's what the two teams represent and the two uniforms, and you're supposed to choose one side or another and cheer for one side or another. That is a simulation of tribalism. We've got food at the grocery store. Even The grocery store is even set up kind of like a, a simulated food hunting preserve where you hunt around the store, you hunt for the best deals. You find, let's say, a can of Coca-Cola. It is The color is red to simulate fruit, and it contains the, the sugars that you would normally find in a, in a piece of fruit out in the natural world. So finding the Coca-Cola and bringing it home and drinking it is a simulation of finding fresh fruit out out in the real world. And so much of what we have today in society is people, especially people who live in cities, who never get out into nature. I'm not saying everybody that lives in a city doesn't get out of the nature. I'm saying those who only limit their existence to the city, they live in this artificial construct. And everything to them is artificial. The, the shopping, the, the hunting is artificial Black Friday shopping. The, the food is artificial food at the grocery store. Even the economics are, are artificial because they can vote presidents into office that just give them more and more entitlements and handouts and goodies. So they're living in an artificial economy that's only sustained by confiscating wealth from others who are actually out producing in the real world. So one of the things that, that, that is most important about living in the real world is actually visiting nature is learning some gardening, some farming. Uh, I, I encourage you to get out into the country if you're not already. Live on a farm and live in the real world for a change, in the real world where, you know, like the other night, I, I had to protect my chickens from, from predators out there. I was out there with my shotgun, uh, keeping, them, keeping them safe and because uh, predators are out there trying to get them. You know, I had to fix the, the, the flat tire on my John Deere tractor. Um, which is, you know, big, big, heavy tire. Um, you, if you live out in the country, you live in the real world and your perspective starts to change. If you live in the city and you worship the city and you worship big government, then it's all artificial and you fall like a sucker for these Black Friday type of events. The, the hype of empty materialism, as Alex said. Much more straight ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break here on The Alex Jones Show. Stay with us. All right, we're back. Yeah, continuing here on the Alex Jones Show, broadcasting live on this Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, from Austin, Texas, behind enemy lines, as they say. It's actually kind of behind the airport. <laughs> it's 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 uh, and it's been crazy out here lately with this Formula One thing going on, and uh, I don't know, the state troopers are going nuts out here with with uh, giving people tickets for finding alternate routes on. Uh, you know, they they try to bypass. The uh, cars that are jammed up on the highway that try to find like another side road to go on, they're getting ticketed for that. Seriously, I'm not making this up, guys. It I, I happened yesterday to some people I know, state troopers giving them a ticket. What does the ticket say? Um, illegal alternate route? I mean, what's the citation, man? <laughs> All they did is find another way to try to get to their destination. It's, it's crazy. I don't, know, I don't know why that's going on. 
All right, now, in the next hour, we've got a, a guest coming up, Mike Bundrant, who is an expert in mental health, who we're going to ask him about some of this crazy crowd behavior that we've seen with Black Friday and some of the things that Alex just commented on with his video. We're also going to continue with your calls, so stay on the line. Uh, we've got Jane, Jim, Mike, Peter, Phoenix, and others on the line, so go ahead and stay on the line. We'll get to your calls in the next hour with uh, Mike Bundrant. And between now and then... I've got an issue here to share with you, and that is any state in the United States, this is sort of getting back to the secession topic that we spoke about in the first hour, but any state that wanted to unleash an economic golden age of abundance could do so very simply by declaring one or two things through the 10th Amendment and saying this is our state's right to do this. And one of those things I want to share with you right now and by the way, I'm going to preface this by saying any state that is in debt could eliminate its debt. Any state that has a, a problem with unemployment could virtually eliminate unemployment. It could become an economic mecca for America if it did these, these two simple things, two or three things. One of them is legalize industrial hemp farming. I'm not talking about growing marijuana to smoke. I'm talking about industrial hemp farming like took place in this country for as long as anyone can remember until it was criminalized. We're talking about states like North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, California, Texas. Uh, in fact, you can grow hemp in, in Colorado and, and Oklahoma, Kansas, all across the Midwest, all across the East Coast, all across the West Coast, Oregon, Washington State even. You can grow hemp everywhere. If one state had the courage to say, let's grow hemp, let's declare, let's say Texas, a legal hemp farming zone, that state would immediately experience a massive economic boom in exporting hemp to all the other states. All the Texas farmers would experience an economic boom from having massive demand for their hemp. Look, America today already buys hemp from Canada and China and Central South America, lots of other places. We buy hemp seeds, we buy hemp fiber, we buy hemp clothing, we buy hemp oils. Why can't we grow it here? All it takes is one state to stand up, like Texas, and say, we're just going to legalize the farming of hemp again, as it used to be legal here in the United States and in Texas, of course. And then that, would be, that state would become the exporter, and, and, and farmers would be just rolling in the dough. Uh, the, the, the state could tax the, the hemp and have massive influx of, of state money to overcome its debt and so on. Now, the next idea... No, oh man, these breaks come up so fast. <laughs> I never have enough time. Tell you what, after this break, I'll share with you the next idea which could create an economic golden age for any state in America that decided to do it. There are many of these ideas. We're only a 10th amendment away, a decision, one decision away from making this happen. So stay with us here on the Alex Jones Show, and I'll bring you that idea when we come back right after this break. We're into the third hour here on this Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Thank you for continuing with us. This is the Alex Jones Show. Mike Adams, the health ranger, filling in for Alex today. And we are talking about a number of interesting ideas, including some ideas for how any state with the courage to stand up to the feds could unleash an era of incredible economic abundance. And it's not difficult. It just takes the courage to invoke the 10th Amendment and legalize basic economic activity in your state. And the issue that we talked about in the last segment was legalizing industrial hemp farming. Imagine if a state like Texas or North Carolina or even California legalized hemp farming, industrial hemp. It would become instantly the exporter of hemp products to the rest of, of North America and would experience a massive economic boom as a result. Imagine incredible job creation, incredible exports out of your state. So why won't a state do it? Are they afraid of the feds? Are they afraid? I, I, I think Texas is not afraid. <laughs> I think Texas should legalize industrial hemp farming so our farmers can actually, you know, make some money for a change instead of going broke. By the way, we've got a guest coming up in the next segment, Mike Bundrant, who is here to talk about some of the mental health uh, issues relative to the holidays and also the madness of crowds, as we just saw with Black Friday and this this crazy simulation of hunting that people go through to line up at, at, at uh, I don't know, 
early hours of the night before uh, to uh, to save 50 bucks on a DVD player or whatever they're lining up for. I'm not even sure exactly what they're lining up for, but it can't be worth the personal time. No way. can't be worth it. Anyway, continuing with our ideas of how states could revolutionize their economies very simply by standing up to the federal government, another idea that's very simple is for a state to declare a, itself to be a health freedom zone, right? A health freedom zone where, for example, uh, practicing holistic medicine is decriminalized because right now, it is illegal in America, for example, and, and even in the state of Texas, it is illegal for a doctor to prescribe nutritional supplements to a patient. That's illegal. Did you know that? They can have their license yanked. It is illegal for an alternative cancer doctor who has a very high cure rate of, of patients to practice alternative cancer therapies in America. It's illegal. It, it's been criminalized for decades. As a result, all the alternative cancer treatment centers are located in Mexico and the Cayman Islands and the Bahamas and everywhere except America. So as a result, the Americans who are seeking the alternative cancer therapies, such as Gerson therapy, very popular and really works, by the way, they flee the United States and they take all their money and all their business to Mexico and, and the Bahamas and the Cayman Islands and so on. Why not declare a health freedom zone in a state in America and this one could be declared in a state like Oregon or New Mexico, potentially, or California or Washington State or even, uh, even North Carolina. I mean, any, any state. And then it would become the medical tourism hub for the entire nation. Americans would come from all over the country to come visit that state and experience health freedom. And in that state, it would be legal to sell raw milk. Yes, you would not be arrested and thrown in jail for selling raw milk. And as an update on that, by the way, Mr. James Stewart, the California raw milk man, 65 years old, has just been released from jail there after months of incarceration in Ventura County Jail and L.A. County Jail for the crime of distributing raw milk, unpasteurized milk, to customers who were gladly lining up to buy it as a wholesome food, unpasteurized enzymes and in intact, healthier food, uh, lower rates of, of allergies when consuming that and so on. So why not have a health freedom state in America and legalize healing for a change? Hmm? There's an idea for you. We'll be right back after this break with Mike Bundren and much more. Stay with us. We're back. Thank you for continuing with us here today on the Alex Jones Show. This is Mike Adams, the health ranger, filling in on this day after Thanksgiving when I did not eat a turkey, by the way. Nothing against it. I just didn't have time. I did not have time to go out and actually get like a wild turkey, which is about the only thing that I would want to eat. Um, <laughs> I just, there's just too much going on. But uh, in any case, my neighbor got one of our wild turkeys, so <clears throat> they're, they're happy, and they, they got their uh, wild game nutrition. All right, now coming up, we've got Mike Bundren here joining us. He is, let me give you the quick intro for, of, of Mike in case you're not familiar with his work. He's the founder of the Healthy Times newspaper that uh, has covered health freedom issues for a long, a long time. Uh, he's got his own online radio show called Mental Health Exposed, and his website is inlpcenter.com where he covers a lot of linguistics and brain processing but from the point of view of empowering you, you know, with, with concepts of liberty and free will. So he's a good guy, and he's, he's got a lot of knowledge, and he's going to comment here today on the Black Friday madness of crowds that we just saw and that Alex just commented on with his video as well uh, and some other topics. Mike, thank you for joining us, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Mike. Glad to be here. Yeah. By the way, I'm just sitting out here in California with the post Prop 37 blues a little bit uh, and a little embarrassed by our state. I was so excited to vote for that and uh, really shocked, really shocked when it, it didn't pass. I really thought at one time that California was a state that was for health and health freedom. Well, Mike, the, Mike, I got to tell you, um, the consensus is, and, and John Rappaport has been working on this especially uh that vote was stolen, and that was fraud. So I think the California voters actually voted to pass that proposition, and they got it stolen from them by, by crooks. That's what happened, man. 
Yeah, well, I uh, and I've read that on your site. Interesting, I'm going to interview John uh, for Mental Health Exposed coming up here in the next month. And by the way, uh, his wife, Laura, uh, is a columnist for Healthy Times newspaper here in Southern California. Oh, I didn't know that. She's a health practitioner. So anyway, they're, they're good people, and I'm real curious to explore that issue with John. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's an important issue. Uh, in fact, I mean, you know, the whole, we saw, um, Alex covered it here on the show with uh, black box voting, um, the, just the widespread voting fraud across the board, not just with Prop 37. But anyway, that's not really our topic here today. Uh, yeah, let's get to Black Friday mindset, the, the creation of the artificial hunting hype, the madness of crowds, people stampeding over each other to get discounts off of electronics made in China's slave shops. What, what is going on with modern day North Americans, uh, humans, that has, has driven them to this sense of warped desperation and, and, and social, I don't know, social insanity of some kind. What's going on, Mike? Yeah, I got to tell you, uh, this is an important issue. And I, so far this holiday season, uh, it, which I haven't really gotten into the spirit of it, we had a great uh, Thanksgiving yesterday with a 100% organic, non-GMO, gluten-free meal that was perhaps the best Thanksgiving meal I've ever had. Uh, but at any rate, we, were, we went to the movies last night, to a late movie, and we got out after midnight and driving through the shopping center on, on the way home, we drove past a Kmart and there were people lined up outside with their sleeping bags and little camping supplies uh, along the sidewalk. And that's when it occurred to me, oh, <laughs> This is what this is what's going on. I mean, I, it, it saddened me because what we're talking about is mass consumerism that has that really does create a frenzy. And uh, I think what's important to understand about that is a couple of things. One, the mass consumerism was intentionally created. Yes, and it's intentionally created based on. Uh, psychological, well-thought and well-founded psychological principles that were, uh, that came from Sigmund Freud. I think most people don't realize that. Well, one of them has got to be scarcity. They create an artificial scarcity to create a sense of urgency, right? I mean, that's one of their tactics, right? Yeah, scarcity, absolutely, a limited supply and so forth. But I'll take a, let's take a step back even further. Okay? When, uh, when when Sigmund Freud was alive and popular and his ideas, they were truly um, groundbreaking ideas. But one of the things, one of the ideas that came out of it is that Freud revealed, or he postulated at any rate, that human beings have a, at their core, are selfish, self-centered, uh, and potentially aggressive. In other words, we're animals inside. We all have this part of ourselves which Freud called the id. And it is uh, potentially sexually aggressive, selfish, self-centered, and so forth. And when this philosophy came out, it concerned government. In fact, it terrified government because governments concerned about their own power got to thinking, well, what if the lid came off humanity and we'd have mass chaos? And so they're really concerned about how do we get this under control, right? So. Uh, Freud's nephew was a man by the name of Edward Bernays. He mm -hmm. knew oh, yeah. that he invented the field of public relations. And he got together with governments and large corporations to teach them how to um, tame this aggressive impulse and keep people docile by focusing on themselves and taming them with mass consumer products and goods, and that's how the whole age of consumerism was started. It was created on purpose to keep people uh, uh, sort of feeding their self-centeredness, distracted from what's really going on, and to keep them sort of tame and docile. Well, well, and, and Bernays, 
sorry to interrupt, but Bernays was a master at, at getting people to believe in, in a, essentially creating artificial demand, creating desire where none should exist. And this is especially true in, for example, the world of fashion and cosmetics and women seeing images of other women having something that they think that they're supposed to have and then doing anything to get that. Yes. Bernays was a master. His mantra was one thing which is to get people to want what they don't need. And that is right. the underlying principle of modern consumerism. It's to create demand where there isn't a need. And if you look around your house, how much of the stuff do you have? That, you know, how much do you really need? Uh, and so that's what Bernays was all about. And he, he literally invented the field of public relations, linking products and services to fame and wealth and popularity and faking credibility. That's one of his big things. He would create fake uh, consumer boards or fake medical boards that would endorse his products. That's how he made bacon and eggs, the American breakfast. He right. surveyed a bunch of doctors, and he sort of created this uh, fake credibility, and so much of public relations is based on that. So it's all... Well, hey, yeah, that's what Prop 37 did. They had these fake groups, like the, the fake police organization in California that said, uh, vote no on 37. And, uh, and you know, we've got, you know, like, today all these, all these fake groups that front for the grocery manufacturers, that front for tobacco, that was a big case where Bernays was involved, you know, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette, and those ads were run in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Uh, yeah, the example right. is just going on. But my question to you, though, Mike, is how does this Black Friday madness, this kind of crowd psychology madness, how does this serve the interests of the global elite or big government controllers? Why are they, in, in, in effect, encouraging this to go on? I don't, I don't quite get how it serves their interests. Well, I think if the, the, the global power structure is not interested in the average consumer being a citizen uh, or the average person being a citizen. Prior to consumerism, there were no consumers. I mean, there were citizens, there were workers, uh, but there weren't consumers. And so part of the, the motivation here and to work you know, together with the large corporations and so forth, part of it is to keep people distracted. Uh, one of the things that, one of the words they use is happy mach happiness machines. Um, they want to create happiness machines. People who uh, satisfy their desires for happiness through materialism. And it keeps people distracted. I would say that's the main thing. Keep people distracted from what's really going on. If they so can keep people pursuing their CD players or their plasma TVs or what have you. If they keep people thinking, this is what's important in my life. It's just get more stuff. Right, right. So they don't pursue the real things that matter, which is uh, awareness and, and the fundamentals of liberty and the quest for knowledge, innovation, advanced uh, artistry, all, all of these things that actually uplift humanity, they want to keep people trapped in this mob psychology of, oh, I need another flat panel TV or a toaster or a, a DVD player, and that's what's going to give me happiness. Exactly. And if you ask the average person, you and I are sitting here uh, pondering, stressing over Prop 37 and what happened there, and we need to figure this out, and we need to get the word out. Well, most people aren't in the slightest bit interested, and the average person is more interested at this point in the year in what they're going to get for Christmas or what they're going to give for Christmas or what have you in terms of things. Yeah. Are they interested in the latest TV or what happened with Prop 37? Most people are going to be interested in something material. That's and true. It's a, it's a success on that level. Or, you know, the, the football game coming up uh, on, on TV. Look, we, okay, okay, we're going to continue with you, Mike, here in the next segment. We've also got coming up... In a few minutes, Jason Burmis reporting live from an airport with a TSA update. That's coming up. We're also going to take calls, uh, ask Mike to take some calls with us here in the next segment after we return from this break. So a lot of exciting information coming up and a few other headlines as well. All of that straight ahead right here on the Alex Jones Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with all that and much more. Continuing with Mike Bundrant, expert in mental health and also how 
false authority uses language to manipulate behavior of human beings. Boy, that's a <laughs> that's a complex field with lots of interesting things going on. Uh, Mike, we've only got you for this segment, this this uh, this entire segment, but I wanted to make sure we cover holiday depression because a lot of people, I mean, a surprisingly large number of people feel depression during the holidays. And uh, what can they do to deal with that more effectively, uh, knowing what you know? Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, you bet. Um, it, it is very common. Um, holiday stress and depression. Uh, there's actually been surveys by the American Psychological Association, and some of these surveys we can count on, uh, that suggest that 50 to 75 percent of people are affected by at least heightened stress during the holidays. And there's also been some interesting research done by mentalhealthamerica.net where they have pinpointed some of the primary sources of holiday stress and depression. And I would say the very first thing to do if this affects you is to pinpoint the source because it, it can come from different areas. Uh, for example, 40% of people who participated in the surveys, 3,000 people participated in the surveys, done in 2006, so it's a couple years old, but 40% of people said the main source of their holiday stress is financial. Mm. And uh, that it's, it's relevant given our last conversation about, you know, the age of modern consumerism and the expectation that you give uh, everyone a gift, don't forget anyone, and get them the best gifts and look at the commercials on television and the, keep up with the latest trends and so forth. A lot of people simply don't have the budget for it, and yet they, uh, they, they give in to the expectation that they should spend, spend, spend. Even the holiday meal can be really expensive if you do it in the traditional way. Hey, even so if you do it organically, that can, that can be expensive too. I know, yeah. Hey, what about, Mike, what about uh, political tension? Especially this year, I think a lot of families, you know, they might get together and part of the family voted for Obama and the other part voted for Romney and another part was trying to vote for Ron Paul, but he, you know, they couldn't do that. So could there be a lot of political tension, uh, especially this year? Yeah, and then, you know, th th those of us who go, well, I voted for Gary Johnson, and then nobody else uh, has even heard of him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that certainly can be. In fact, uh, in the survey, it's actually uh, time with family is one of the stressors that uh, that people report. However, um, I was surprised by this. Only 17% of people said that time with family is part of uh, of their holiday stress. And I would have thought it would be more. It would be a lot more than that. And you know, it's the thing you get together with people that are in your family that, quite frankly, you may or may not like or may or may not get along with. And one of the things that comes up is that that old family dynamic surfaces and uh, people are really affected by it. I tell people, look, if you want to deal with your issues with your family, the old power struggles that may still be alive in your psyche, if you want to deal with those issues, deal with those issues, but don't do it during the holiday. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. uh, deal with it. Do, wait, get past the holidays in January or February. Maybe get an outside perspective and start to address your family dynamic. But don't just wait for it to blow up during the holidays. Do what you can. Sidestep it. Pretend it doesn't exist. Get through the holidays. Have a decent day for yourself. Yeah, well, don't think that that's the time you have to deal with you know, 30 years of angst in your family. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. Welcome home. Oh, yeah, you never supported my dreams as a child. I mean, that's not the way to walk in. <laughs> now look at my life, right? I mean, it's right. not the time to do that, to deal with that issue. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Well, I just want to say, for those who want to learn more from, from you, and, and if you just joined us, we're, we're interviewing Mike Bundrant here. He's the founder of Healthy Times Newspaper, and also Mental Health Exposed is his uh, audio show, online radio show. And I'd like to take one call here, what we've got time for. We may not have time for, for a complete answer, but let's go to Jane in Texas. Uh, Jane, you're on the air. Do you, have a, do you have a question for Mike, or what's on your mind, Jane? No, I was just, re I'm, it's been about an hour, but anyway, I was raised organic before the word ever came out. I went through 13 presidents, so I know organic. We raised our own food, we had our own animals, and there was no chemicals available in those days, so 
Yeah, and exactly. That's that's the way food is supposed to be. And try to get it today, because in Texas, you I always got raw milk, even in at my home state of Pennsylvania. But you can't down here. Yeah, because now it, the FDA it, has a, has spies and infiltrators. Um, uh, I tell you what, Jane, stay with us. I'll come back to you after the break. I want to thank Mike Bundrett for joining us today. Mike, thank you. Good segment with you there. Thanks, Mike. All right, take take care, Mike, and everybody. Hey, keep your brain healthy for the holidays. Uh, learn about mental health. We'll be right back. All right. Yeah, we're continuing here. We were just talking to a caller who described her childhood uh, growing up on real food in uh, America. And we're going to go to her. And then go after that, we've got uh, Jason Burmis and Ashley Jessica joining us with a report on what happened to them at the airport in Albany and their showdown with public relations personnel, I guess, who are defending TSA pedophilia molestation of senior citizens and everything else that they do. That should be an interesting segment. Don't miss that. But first, let's go back to our, our caller, Jane, uh, in Texas. Uh, Jane, just want to give you a chance to finish up there. Any additional comments on what real food is? Still cook from scratch, I always have, but it's getting increasingly harder to find good food. I don't know what's GMO. I don't know uh, where the food comes from today because I, I grow some in my little yard, but I can't depend on the stores to give me anything honestly because I even asked Sprouts, was there corn GMO? And they didn't know. And did they, and yeah, well, Whole Foods doesn't know. I mean, they, their employees give you the wrong information. They say they don't sell GMOs, but they do. And so it's extremely hard to know what you're getting and where it's coming from. So it's hard. And when they blame people on, you know, their lifestyle is caused by, like, diabetes, I, I don't think it's all the person's fault. I, because you I agree get with you, Jane. You nailed it. It is that people are being victimized by the food industry, by the GMO industry, by the vaccine industry, by chemtrails. People are being victimized by this. And I, I want to thank you for your call. You made, you made some really good points there. Thanks. And, hey, teach your children and your grandchildren the way that you were raised, okay? We have to keep this knowledge going from generation to generation because that's what we're going to have to rely on once this whole artificial system that we live in today collapses, implodes upon itself. And that day is drawing ever closer and here to give us some reports on how that may be happening in the realm of surveillance and security and police state tyranny is none other than Jason Burmis and joined by Ashley, Ashley Jessica. And uh, Jason, of course, is working with the intelhub.com on his new film. And he just had a, uh, not quite an altercation, but let's say a, a uh, an event with TSA in Albany. Jason, welcome to the Alex Jones Show once again. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Ashley, on. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Tell us, what, what went down? Um, why don't I let Ashley start? Because, you know, we went out there and uh, she started this campaign. And quite frankly, Mike, it, it's kind of disheartening that somebody who's a Canadian citizen is out there more than you U.S. citizens out there. But if you're going to walk or talk the talk, you've got to walk the walk. And this girl has done it. And uh, she'll start you off. All right. Go, go for it, Ashley. Hi, Mike. Okay, so basically we were at the right in front of the TSA checkpoint at Albany International Airport. Jason was filming. I was handing out flyers to the travelers coming up the escalator. Um, within about seven minutes, I would say, uh, airport personnel and two sheriffs came up the escalator. Well, the sheriffs let us alone in the beginning. They didn't. They, they did. weren't there. Essentially, the media personnel came up, yeah. demanded we go downstairs and stop filming right there. Yeah. And I said to him, look, we had off the TSA's website that we were more than allowed to film. Uh, we made the comment that this was an uh, a national uh, outdoor film week that it had been covered by not only Infowars.com, and I made it known it's the number one alternative news site in the world, the Alex Jones Show, the number one internet radio program on over 100 affiliates. And I said, you know, Drudge has covered this. The Huffington Post on the left has covered this. We've had local affiliates cover this. We absolutely have the right to be here. Mm -hmm. So he immediately said he was going to call a sheriff over, and I said, I encourage that. That's fine. So the sheriffs came over, and they started talking to me, and I said, 
you know, I'll come downstairs with you guys. That's fine. But I'm not going to stop filming. I absolutely have that right. And through yeah. the whole thing, the media relation, no, you don't. You need a million dollar insurance policy. I'm not giving you the right to film. I'm saying, wow. sir, you have federal employees here. You have no choice. This is our right to do so. So as usual, so their media relations personnel was completely misinformed, spouting a bunch of lies and, and <laughs> trying to scare you into doing something, into not doing something that you had the right to do, which was to film. Absolutely. And this isn't my first rodeo. So I of remained course. calm. I, I had uh, all the information in front of me and uh, we went downstairs with the sheriffs and after about five or 10 minutes of them conversing and uh, them talking to the CEO of the airport over the phone and then calling into the Albany County Sheriff's Department, uh, very bluntly, the sheriff told him, we can't do anything. This is absol absolutely constitutionally protected. Right. They're not soliciting anybody. They mm -hmm. are absolutely allowed to hand out this information. And the response from this gentleman was, well, then I'm going to shut down the whole upper side of the airport for non-ticketed passengers. Really? And, well, and, yes. and he did so. And so, he did so. So he threatened to disrupt air travel in America to stop you handing out literature peacefully to other travelers. He not only threatened, he did it. He absolutely did it. Uh, he did you know, it. I, I, he did, yes, he, he shut it down. Did it. He mm -hmm. shut it down. He, if you did not have a ticket, you were not permitted upstairs where we were originally filming, which is the only checkpoint at Albany. You know, I, like I said, I'd just gone through there Wednesday evening. Uh, every time I go, wow. I opt out. I, I've not been able to just go through the metal scanners. They always want me to go through the body scanners. I have to take these pat downs. And uh, the ignorance of these TSA agents parroting the same line that it's no worse than your cell phone radiation. Are you going to tell me that a four inch device in my pocket gives off the same level of millimeter waves or radiation of an eight foot by three foot uh, device that takes a picture of my body. It's absolutely ludicrous. No, they've been completely lied to about that. They're just spouting disinformation. I bet they didn't even know that their machines have never been independently tested or certified by anyone uh, as being safe at all. And that the TSA refuses to subject the machines to that kind of independent testing because they obviously know the results are gonna be, hey, these machines give you cancer. And that's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. So in frustration, he shuts down the entire uh, top. People that were you know, trying to help their family members or pick somebody up were being sent down the escalator. Uh, he tried to disrupt us by saying we were blocking the escalator. The there was no one even going down the escalator. He's like, you're blocking the flow of traffic. Because we were just handing out, we, we decided we're just gonna stand at the bottom of the escalator and hand out flyers there. Mm -hmm. However, the sheriff stood there the entire time. Yeah. He was very pleasant. We conversed with him again and again and again. Uh, this uh, media relations person, and, and I want to give out the number so you can yeah. call yeah, give it out. National Airport and let them know that we are allowed to film and that his actions are absolutely insane. And that number is 518-242-2200 or 2222. And I'm encouraging listeners to please call them with your displeasure of how misinformed and uninformed this gentleman is. Now, this, asked, this media relations person, he was an employee of the airport or of the TSA? No, he, he was an employee of the airport, and he said there were no TSA personnel downstairs, which was a complete and total lie. They right. were coming down the escalator. To try again to make us stop filming. And I said to him, look, man, this is completely legal. And every time he went to the police officer, well, you make sure they don't leave. And the police officer said, I can't detain these people. They, they haven't done anything wrong. And he's like, well, I want to see his ID. He said, sir, I can't even ask him for his ID. He has not committed a crime. And I do not <laughs> Good. So the yeah, sheriffs know what they're talking about there. Absolutely. That's and awesome. Applause. They need emails. They need thanks. You know, mm -hmm. don't disrupt them too much. But if you people out there, can, and it's on a website, you can find the numbers. You can find the emails. Thank them for doing their job because they did their job. This person was informed. He followed the law the entire the sheriff. time. There was yes, the sheriff. In yeah. fact, it's even a time, I mean, this guy was so disheveled with the fact that we had a camera and were letting people in on this information. Was it he, was about 50-50 who were receptive, Mike, you know. Did he have, could, I gotta ask you though, did he have kind of a demonic glow in his eyes? Did he, did he, did he growl and want to take you to the private TSA rape room and have his way with you? He wanted to take you to a room to fill out a form in which I was going to get a permit to film there. And I said, I don't need a permit. I'm not going to a back room with you. I told him, I have no nothing to hide, Mike. I want people to look me up. 
So I gave him my name. I said, this is where you can find my work. I'm encouraging people. Yeah. He then asked me for my address. I said, I don't have to give you my address. Your address? What, yeah, is my, he, <laughs> what does he think? This is like, show me your address. papers, Nazi Germany or Stasi. Oh, oh. Um, let me give out the number again for those who want that. That's 518-242-2200. Again, 518-242-2200. And that is the number of the airport or the, the, the public yeah, relations? Media relations department at Albany International Airport. Got it. And, and again, Mike, we were not being disruptive, and the sheriffs picked up on that right away. I had a long conversation with him. Um, it, it was really interesting. It was actually very heartening to me that the cops did the right thing. Awesome. You know, because I fully went there expecting that there might be some kind of an altercation. And he simply said to me, you know, try not to escalate this. And I said, you know, I've been very, very polite to you and this gentleman, even though he's being abrasive, and I will continue to do so. I go, if you suspect me of anything, you let me know, and I'm going to cooperate. Well, but and, do you also see the contradiction in that whole thing? Like, you are supposed to be polite, but the TSA is committing crimes, uh, pedophilia crimes against our children. That's not polite. So they can do anything, but you have to stay in this box of politeness. That's the message. And, and you did stay in that box of politeness, and that's probably why, you know, they didn't drag you out of there. But, but isn't, isn't that double standard just incredible? It's an absolute double standard, but you essentially take the power away from them by being informed and not being rude. This guy right. is going to look like the villain on the video because he is. Mm -hmm. You know, there was also another point where he came up and he took a stack of my flyers as if it was his property. And I didn't even have to say anything. And the sheriff immediately said, hey, you know, if you want to go over something with the flyer with me, you can have one of them. But you need to put the rest of them back. And then he kind <laughs> of trying to steal your flyers? Crowd. Yeah. Trying yeah. to take our, oh, trying our, to take our flyers, trying to take our material, trying oh, to man. Put film there. It gets better, you know. Oh, yeah. We left on our own recognizance after I had filmed for, uh, you know, gotten about an hour of film. We stayed there for about two hours handing out flyers because uh, I had some prior game engagements later in the afternoon and to do this show. And on our way out, uh, the woman at the uh, parking garage where you have to check out starts flagging me down and making me go into a thing. And she's on the phone. And then I hear her on the phone go, his license plate number is, and she took my license really? plate number. Yes, so absolutely did. Gave it to this gentleman or whoever she was on the phone with. And then she tried to apologize to me, Mike. She said, I'm sorry. And I looked her in the face and I said, no, you're not sorry. I'm like, you just took my license plate number. You're oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, you're in the surveillance tracking system again. I, mean, I know you're already there, but you're in it again. And that's a, that's a form of intimidation to say, oh, we know who you are. We want your home address. We want your, your vehicle license plate number. We're going to steal your, your literature that you're handing out. I'm so, I mean, it's so childish. I'm surprised he didn't try to shoot you with spit wads from a soda pop straw or something. It's just so s silly. It absolutely he started is. filming us, actually. No, he did come down and yeah. film us, and he out right in my face with the camera. I told him my name. I spelled it out for him. I said, you know, I hope everybody checks out our information. And then probably during the end, the last 15, 20 minutes we were there, uh, the sheriff came up to us yet again. And uh, he talked to us and he, he asked me my information if I was willing to give that up. And I said, you know, you've been extra polite with me. I'm like, I, I would really like you to check out my information. And I gave him my email address, my name. I even gave him my phone number and told him to call me if he'd like. He had also agreed not to share that information with the, the uh, man from public relations. Excellent, excellent. Now, he, he asked me if I had an ID. I said, yes, sir, I absolutely have identification. However, unless I've, I've committed a crime or you suspect me of so, I'm going to keep that in my pocket. And he said, that's fine. Wow. And, you know, he did the same wow. thing with Ashley. He asked her her information, and she said she was not comfortable with giving it to him. They left her alone. Yeah. All right, they now, where right can away. people watch this video? I assume you're probably editing this video compilation at this right now or uh, after I this. i got to tell you, I'm a little busy over the next couple of days, and I did so on HDV tape, which I know is now ancient, but it was my more professional camera. So, uh, you know, on Sunday, I plan on uh, logging and transferring it. I'll have an hour then. I'm going to probably edit it down to about 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, people can either check it out through my Twitter feed at Jason Burmis or over at my YouTube channel, uh, Jason Justice 911. But you, you can be sure within the next week it will be posted and shared. Okay, Jason Justice 911, that's your YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, got it. Now, the next question for both of you then is what was the reaction of the other air travelers when they were handed this, this literature by you? Did, they, did any of them uh, uh, support it? Did they read it? What did they do? I would say about half were pretty intrigued by it. They were interested. They, some people even thanked us for handing it out, for standing up for travelers' rights. And then about another half, I would say, didn't really care. But, they're gonna, 
But at the same time, we did have a pilot come up to us, yes, and he yes. was well informed. He's like, a lot of people don't know that this breaks uh, constitutional boundaries. And he was traveling, mm-hmm. but he was clearly a pilot. And there was another point where, you know, a couple of the people behind uh, the U.S. Airways kiosk there, uh, they wanted to know what was going on. Ashley went and shared the information, and we talked to them, some of it off camera. And one mm-hmm. of the things one of the gentlemen said to me is, we all know that the TSA is smoke and mirrors. And that kind of took me aback. You know, he was happy <laughs> to see us. He admitted the TSA was smoke and mirrors. You know, I even had a conversation with that sheriff saying, you know, they're looking into privatized security. And I said, well, I would much rather have privatized security than an administration that is out of control, has a two-week training program, and essentially pays their workers a little more than minimum wage, because that's not what we need for safety, Mike. Yeah. Well, this, this kind of activism that you're, you're, you're just engaged in, that you're sharing with us here, this is what America needs, obviously, but at, at a much larger scale. Do you, do you get a sense that, there, that people are fed up enough with the TSA that there could be some kind of a, a viral breakout of, of uh, disobedience or handing out literature or opting out or filming like you did? What's, what's the consensus from being there live in person? Here's the deal, Mike. We believe that this opt-out film week needs to go further than this. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times, Mike, on the forums, on the message boards, people say, oh, you're just talking about things. You're not really doing anything. Well, let me tell you something. This doesn't have to be just this week. If you are listening to this program right now, whether it's live or on a replay, you too can spend a couple hours out of your weekend doing the same thing we've done. And if there is enough groundswell, if every single weekend a major airport is hit by people handing out this information, filming the TSA, we will have an effect. More and more people will start taking notice. And this is a great way for you to get active. This is an issue that does affect all of us who travel. Let me commend you, Mike, because you've really put out one of the best viral videos out there that uses humor to make people aware of what the TSA does. And that's a huge thing. You know, humor reaches across all boundaries, all political spectrums, and that's what we need. So I'm calling on all you people out there that don't think InfoWars does enough, Jason Burmis doesn't do enough, Mike Adams, Alex Jones, you can do this. It is absolutely legal. Be armed with a printout of the TSA.gov site where they say that you can film at these checkpoints. Uh, Be very aware of what your rights are. And I would say kill them with kindness. You know, if these guys want to act inappropriately, if they want to act childlike, if they want to lie to us, let us do so. But get it on film. Never stop recording. And that's how we're going to win this. Stand, stand your ground, reassert your rights, uh, be polite, don't escalate, you know, v- uh, violence or arguments or anything like that. But what, what has really struck me about your experience there, Jason, is the, the contrast between the local sheriffs and the sheriff's deputies actually abiding by the law, understanding the boundaries of, of authority versus the TSA, which knows no boundaries. They have no respect for any law. They invent the rules as they go along. They violate federal law every second of every day by you know, molesting travelers. The TSA is out of control, respects no law whatsoever, and it is a danger to the future of America. And I want your comments on that, Jason and Ashley, when we come back right after this break. So if you'll stay with us, I'll, I'll ask for your comments on that. So continuing here on The Alex Jones Show, we'll be right back after this break with that, and we're wrapping up the show in the next segment, so stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, we're continuing our conversation with Jason Burmis and Ashley Jessica, who both join us by Skype after their encounter with the airport media relations person in Albany as they were handing out TSA awareness literature, or let's say air travelers' rights literature, and filming it, and boy... Turning on a camera, that freaked out the airport media relations person who turned out to be a very threatening and childish individual. So, so Jason and Ashley, continuing with uh, the question I asked you before the break about the lawlessness of the TSA and, and the airport personnel, uh, don't, it, what are your thoughts on that? And isn't it amazing that it's gotten to this point? It is amazing. It's amazing how, how so many people who work there don't even know what the TSA regulations are and they don't even care at all. Um, That's why I think everyone, when they do go, they need to have that printout with them so that you can show the airport personnel that you are allowed to film at the TSA checkpoints because they seem to think that you are not 
Yeah. And they use that right. talk, talking point to intimidate. My amazement is in the ignorance of their workers, Mike. You know, I just flew in from uh, LAX on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, I got to the body scanner. I said I was going to opt out. The first thing out of the, their mouth is it's just uh, like cell phone radiation and a second person parroted that and i said no it no it's not he then shushed me with his hands <laughs> and this is a 22 year old 23 year old uh gentleman if i can even call him that i then went through the process of course my bag needed to be screened for explosive material twice twice mike and they broke one of my tripods did i get compensated for that no i didn't i didn't get an apology i was just sent on my way hey, i'm surprised and they didn't steal your gear and sell it on ebay that's what they're really known <laughs> well, for that's doing. why i don't check luggage you know I, I bring two backpacks full of gear and it never leaves my sight uh, i'm not going to allow the T tsa to rifle through anything that's not in my view but you know getting back mike to what we can do mm -hmm. we need to have this campaign go on beyond this week like i said Every single weekend, some of you people have an hour. Some of you have two. And look at where it's gone. Mike, it started with taking your shoes off, take off your jacket, no liquids, no lighters, metal detector, radiation scanner, millimeter scanner, now scanners plus invasive body searches. And so freeze. Line, Don't forget it, freeze. Yes. Oh, yeah. And shush. <laughs> it, it, it just keeps going and going yeah. and going and if we do not pull it back now it is going to be full body cavity searches i guarantee it within the next five years and then maybe some people will wake up that have but we don't want to get there like we want to pull it back because even if you believe all the propaganda the propaganda states mike they have gotten zero terrorists after 9 11. that's after the shoe regulations that's right that's Body scanners, mm -hmm. that's after the new millimeter wave scanner. It's zero, zero, zero. So if you can tell me that somehow this makes me safe without going after the quote unquote target group of terrorists that lurk under every bed, I don't know, know how you can stand there with a straight face and try to justify these actions. No, they should just put a big sign over the airport now that says a logic free zone. If you walk in and you say to the TSA, one plus one equals two, you get molested just for having logic. Uh, absolutely. And I just want to say that we need to do something about this now because one day we may not have a chance to resist tyranny and stand up to what's going on. Like Jason was saying, if we let it get to that point. Folks, if a young Canadian girl can spearhead a campaign in the United States that literally shakes the TSA on every level and shake their authority. You can too, and you need to get out there and join us. Well said, Jason Burmis and Ashley Jessica, thank you both for your report today. Check out Jason's YouTube channel at JasonJustice911 for that video in a few days. And thank you for joining us today on the Alex Jones Show. It's been my pleasure to be the fill-in host for today. Uh, thank you, crew, for coming in today and have a great Thanksgiving weekend, everybody. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.